The next question here is a family member was killed tragically. Now, trying to deal with this while also honoring him. Any advice for spiritual and physical practices? And this is, uh, I can give some physical advice. Um, I, you know, I, man, that's, you know, when you lose someone, that's, that's heavy, you know, and um, a lot of the youth that I work with who end up losing a, a loved one, you know, we do the, just the practice of, you know, writing, you know, writing something, writing, writing everything you have ever wanted to say to that person, either put in a balloon, put in a bottle, if you're in a balloon, we take this walk up the mountain and let the balloon go and hopefully to release everything with that person. And if you don't have access to a mountain around you, putting something into, you know, putting something out into the river just so so you can, re reality is you're never going to really let go of that pain. It's always going to be there because that loved one is still connected. Um, when I lost my father, it was something I held inside. Like I, I didn't cry or anything. And it was just kind of like, I have to be tough for my brothers. I have to be tough for, you know, for everybody else around me. And when it did come out, it just came out to me when I was driving and I had to pull over and I was just, you know, letting it go. And um, from there, I, I wanted to just explore the idea of the dream world and how this can be a space that I can actually begin to have those deeper level of conversations with my my father, with my loved ones in that space. So I just began to do some work into looking into that dream state as a way for that connection. And then several times I've met, I've connected with my father in that state, but that don't mean that that's the ultimate solution. That was just something that I've done for helping with my healing. But with a lot of the youth, I just encourage them to figure out ways to let go a lot of that anger because when a, when a loved one leaves and there's that anger or there's that love or there's something associated with it, the person just holds on to it. And the longer you hold something, the heavier it becomes. And they just begin to weigh them down. So I just encourage them to find a way to release it through the balloon ceremonies or through, um, you know, sending things up the river. Also, I would like to add to that too. Uh, guys, also, it's another video you should take a look at. Is uh, Savan, he put up a video on the Charleston uh, shooting, but in the video, he doesn't really talk about the shooting itself. Basically, like he was talking about, there was an excerpt of him talking about the reason as to why you can't reach a ancestors because you're not tapping to the frequency or the, the certain color or the spectrum. And so when you go into that frequency, whatever it may be, and for me it was like the heart space, the heart chakra space, dealing with loss and grief, and you'll be able to communicate with that person um, that just transitioned. And so that helped me greatly with my uh, grandmother, and I kept having all these different dreams, like you said, Brother Life, of just connecting with them in that space, and it's still going on, you know, even after these two years of knowing and that they're always giving gifts um, to me in that space that I wouldn't be able to get here. And so it's just a whole nother ball game when you're dealing with that. You know what I mean? The, the, the spiritual realm versus just the physical. Oh, we don't have them here physically. And they left us tragically, but they're still alive and well in another space. We just have to dial in and tap in. So that's another video that uh, I would encourage you all to take a look at too. I find that uh, writing helps a lot and journaling helps a lot. And when I've had clients who've uh, lost loved ones, I've asked them to simply write a letter to their loved ones. And it's often in the act of writing when the motor skills of the hand is connecting with the brain, you can actually often say a lot more than you can say in words or in a meditation or in an ancestral ceremony or anything. And you're actually putting all your emotions down into that piece of paper and then you can even burn that piece of paper in the time of a full moon or a, a, a make a personal ritual for yourself or even keep it. I've kept letters that I've written to my father uh, when we lost him in 2011 and just lovely things that I'm writing to him about of things that have happened in my life since he passed away which I could share with him you know, and it's just a personal journal that I keep. So that's a very nice way of um, having a completion process with your loved ones. 
Also, um, it depends on your own spiritual practice, um, you know, in meditation to, um, you know, like, like Paige is saying, to dial into that frequency. If you have anything that reminds you or that the person own, you can talk to them and in your meditation and um, ask them where they are at. Maybe they come to your mind because, you know, there's, there's a line there that's calling to you. So um, paying attention to that. And, um, you know, I, I personally, you know, believe that if it, an ancestor is here with us, you know, so you have direct, direct communication with them, you know, and um, you can change the narrative in your own memory of what ha- whatever happens. So uh, you can go back in and ask them and guide them. You know, I believe that in the physical realm, we're just as powerful as we are in the spiritual realm. So things that you do here will reflect there. So if someone died violently, guide them, you know, um, talk to them to be at peace, you know, and, you know, the same way that the spiritual realm will be helping you, you can help you know, anyone there. And um, for close family members, you know, sometimes you might be that beacon, especially for those of us who quote unquote awaken earlier than others, you know, guide them and um, guide them to uh, home, basically. That's beautiful. 